You can get some pretty good cameras now for not a lot of money and you can have a lot of fun with them. And that's what I do. I have fun with my photography. I found this camera to be pretty good and uh, it's got a long telephoto lens. I like nature photography. The things I like to photograph don't like me to get close to them. a camera like this uh, with a thousand millimeter lens, uh, interchangeable lens camera, you'd have to spend all, many thousands to, uh, to get the same capability. Uh, you know, and people say, well, you know, gee, Cosmo, that has a small sensor. You need a big sensor. You need a one inch sensor. Well, when you do that, you don't get a thousand millimeter lens like this in a, in a pocket camera. When you do that, you have to get a, a, a much larger lens. So this is a compromise and I made that compromise and I'm pretty happy. I'm going to stick with this until I change my mind. While I don't get the best shot, I get a lot of shots because I have this small camera with me. Uh, small cameras are quite capable. A lot of fun to use. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, go, 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 go. get shots because I have my camera and people with uh, interchangeable lens cameras often don't have the right lens. Manual will give you a lot of capability that you can't get with uh, automatic. Two stops underexposed. This is one stop underexposed. This is two stops overexposure. This is one stop overexposure. This is what the camera, this is, it's, it thinks I want to see this. It's, when you shoot automatic, you're getting what the camera wants to give you. And that's often good. In the highest percentage of photographs, that's fine. I'll be out hiking down a trail like this and uh, some creature will cross the path in front of me. I need a camera that's small that I can pull out and just shoot. I won't get the best photograph, but I will get a memory out of it. Here's my camera bag. It rides on my belt. It's uh, very small, lightweight. 
has a zipper pocket in the front, holds two extra batteries and the camera, and uh, it's my whole camera bag. This allows me to enjoy the outdoors and what I'm doing a lot more than lugging around a big heavy backpack full of camera gear. Besides being lightweight, the tripod has to be small enough to fit in my backpack. Uh, when buying a tripod, I pay attention to uh, the legs. Uh, I like nice legs, and uh, this has nice legs. And uh, what, what I like about these legs is when you twist the, uh, the collar to lock it, the leg doesn't twist. That's quicker when you want to uh, deploy the tripod. You just loosen up all three or four of these, slide them out, and close them up. Now this one, this is a much older tripod, and this one, when I turn this, the leg twists. So I have to hold the leg with one hand and twist this with the other. It's a little slower, but this tripod is so lightweight, I'll carry it anyway. When you buy a tripod or a tripod head, pay attention to the mount. This is the Swiss Arca mount. It's kind of a universal mount, and it mounts up with any tripod head that has that type of a mount. If you get somebody like Manfrotto, they have their own mount. So once you buy their mount, it's only good on a Manfrotto tripod. <laughs> When you do get a tripod mount, if you do decide to go with the Swiss Arca head, you get these plates. Now, notice this plate has uh, grooves on all four sides, and to me, that's a really convenient plate, because no matter how I put it in here, it will be uh, uh, mounted correctly. Now, let's have a look. <laughs> it will be mounted correctly. Uh, a lot of them only come with slots on two sides. Some of them come with a, a little groove in them for putting a handle on, like a little attachment point. But my favorites uh, are these uh, with the four-sided grooves. They're a little harder to find and maybe cost a little more. I find for extreme telephoto, I'm, I'm really having a, a much better uh, scenario. Uh, after I was photographing some beavers up at a pond, uh, I was having trouble. Uh, there's something which I call stiction. Uh, there is an actual term like that. And what it is, is the initial force it takes to turn the, the uh, in this case, the tripod head. The one that I had, I was using a handle on it, and it, um, it would stick. And when I first moved it, it would, uh, it would jump a little bit. Wow. Hard to get them in focus. <laughs> oh boy, I wish I had more light. Now, normally you wouldn't notice that, but on extreme telephoto photography, definite factor, and I find it much better to hold this camera in my hand while it's mounted and turn the tripod. I have one control to release the ball. Now, if I release that ball, if I'm following a duck on a lake and I release that ball, like the, the thing is li liable to uh, change its uh, elevation. And uh, with this...
with this second control, you release this while this is locked and I can pan. And uh, I prefer that. You know, just keep those controls in mind if you're looking for a uh, tripod head. And maybe you'll only buy it once. Oh, you can actually see people. If you have a big heavy camera with a big long lens, maybe this is not your choice, but uh, for these small cameras, it's uh, more than enough. This, this one I think only weighs six ounces, this ball head, which is pretty lightweight. Uh, a lightweight ball head is usually a, a pound, <laughs> so, uh, and it's working quite well for me. This is a, uh, a new entry to the tripod arsenal. Here's the one I have been using uh, hiking. This is a new one. It's uh, made by Vanguard, but it has a special feature which I'm going to show you. This might be too big for me to carry around backpacking, but if I'm doing macro photography around a trailer or some other types of special photography, this might be perfect. Even for a short hike, this would be perfect. I really like these Vanguard tripods, uh, especially this one. It's, uh, it's a good compromise tripod. It's uh, light enough, yet rigid enough for what I want to do. The only complaint I have about it, the problem is the center post. So their solution to this is, is you pop out the center post and you put in this short stubby post and then you put the uh, move the tripod head to this thing and you can use it very low down. Now that's wonderful, but what I like to photograph is not going to wait around that long for me to do that process. It'll hop or crawl or fly away. This bigger, heavier, new addition to my tripod arsenal is again another Vanguard uh, tripod. And this one has a special trick which I really was drawn to. Uh, long hike, five, seven mile hike. I don't know what I want to lug this around. But I'll always wish I had it with me. I loosen this up. You, know, you loosen this up. And you can tilt this over. And that's a pretty nice feature uh, for me. Salamanders, amphibians, reptiles, they, uh, they're really sensitive to water quality. The water must be pretty good. There's a lot of salamanders in here. Uh, the things that get them are uh, weed killers, lawn chemicals, pesticides, industrial pollution, uh, all the stuff that suburbia is made of. But uh, these guys have found a home is to open these legs completely, put this down in the ground, and now I can put my camera, and this is not the head I'm going to use, I'm going to get a different head for it, but uh, this allows me to get a lot closer to what I want to photograph. Um, you know, I have a small thing there, I can get right down to that level, and at higher elevations I can uh, have the legs open and uh, get closer to what I want to photograph because this head, because this thing will stick out a lot further. A very simple solution, cost effective for the same problem are these things that are called ultrapods and uh, they fold up quite small. I think this one is $20. Uh, let me just loosen it up with one hand here. And, uh, you know, this is a uh, short pocket tripod. And because I'm using a light camera, you know, score another one for light cameras, uh, this thing um, can support the camera. This one's, you know, it's always a challenge to get it to support it with this camera, this tripod, but it does it. And I carry this all the time. It's very cost effective. And uh, I use it more than you would think. Uh, this is a heavier one, a stronger one. And uh, I use this one just as much. Uh, it's, a, it's a great little tripod, uh, very simple. Uh, it all depends on your needs. The Vanguard tripods I use, they put a rubber cushion here on the two tripods that I have. And what that does is if you uh, lower this, when it hits down here, it cushions. And it's uh, a nice little feature, you know, it's not a game uh, a deal breaker. Both of these tripods have an attachment point here for a, uh, a leash, 
and I can put that on and make a nice uh, shoulder strap for it and just make it lightweight portability. This one came with a case. I think they both came with a case, but I, I, I don't use the case. I, I'm too lightweight a uh, hiker for that stuff. But uh, so, you know, so it's nice features. Thank you for watching this very long video. Uh, my closing shot here is of a wildlife sanctuary where tripods come to mate. And this is a handheld shot.